Another month and another Home Assistant update is here, the June 2022.6 update. And I guess this marks the halfway point for new releases this year. This month is more of an incremental release compared to some previous versions, but as always, there is some welcome new improvements and additions. So let's get into the first one, logbook improvements. The logbook is a place to see the history of your devices and sensors, what time they turned on and turned off, or what their value was at a given time. But this month sees a few new improvements. Firstly, the logbook is now significantly faster than it was in previous releases. Sometimes with larger installs, they could take quite a while to load depending on how much history there was, but now they are super fast to load and much more responsive. Excellent. The logbook has also been added into more locations. So now when you go into an integration and select a device, the logbook will be shown on the device page and now updates in real time as the devices and entities change, which is super useful for debugging and to give you more visibility into what's going on. Another cool addition is that supported entities will now show event data in the logbook too. For example, button presses of remotes or other devices if the integration supports it. And finally, logbook data can now be viewed live and will update in real time, instead of constantly having to update the date range. Logbook cards added to your dashboard will also now update in real time too. Speaking of date and time ranges, if you use the amazing energy dashboard in Home Assistant, you can now compare data against the previous time period. So if you are viewing your energy consumption for that month, you can hit the compare data button and it will show you comparison data for the previous month so that you can make sure you are on the right track. Next, some of you may remember that in last month's release, we got the new calendar trigger, which would essentially allow you to start an automation from a calendar event. So for example, to change your office lighting when a Zoom meeting started. Well, this month that has now been expanded so that you can now offset the time on that calendar trigger. Using the same example, this would allow you to turn on your meeting studio lights, set your meeting indicator, enable your microphone and camera all five minutes before your meeting actually started, or as an easy way of sending text to speech notifications to let you know when to leave to make it on time for an appointment. Application credentials for OAuth integrations are now much easier to manage too. Now, this might not be something you are familiar with, but essentially OAuth is an authentication method that is used with many integrations to authenticate with a third party service like Spotify or Xbox. And the upshot of this new update is that OAuth credentials are now much easier to manage with a new tab in the UI that helps you to keep on top of everything, meaning no more YAML to edit. When you set up a new integration that uses OAuth, you will also be guided through the setup, which is an improvement on before, and all of your application credentials will now show up in the UI, giving you quick visibility into all of the credentials that you have set up. The scene editor also sees an improvement here, since you can now select individual entities to include in a scene, rather than a device as a whole, which may have multiple entities. So now you can select just one single entity for that scene. Once again, we also see even more performance improvements to the database, which offers not only disk write reductions, which should help preserve SD card lifetimes, but we also see a size reduction in the database too, with around 25 to 40% size reduction quoted. Someone has been on a serious database kick recently, it seems, as this is the third database performance improvement we've seen in a row, which of course we love to see. That is pretty much it for all of the bigger stuff in this release, but as always, there is a bunch of minor additions to this update too, which you can check out over in the full release notes. Some notable updates are that GStreamer and VLC Media Player have now been added to the media browser. The preload camera settings that used to be shown on every camera feed has now been moved to the device settings. Tasmota now supports the tilting of covers in Home Assistant, and there has also been 100 new material design icons added to Home Assistant 2 for us to enjoy. There have also been seven new integrations added to this release too, and three new integrations moved over from YAML into the UI. 
I'm personally really looking forward to this new integration called Big Ass Fans. This should work nicely with the media browser so that you can stream and cast... What? It's an... It's an air fan. Like, like a, like cooling, like cool you down fan. Oh, that's a bummer. Finally, as always, make sure to check out the breaking changes section for anything you need to be aware of before hitting update. Standout ones to be aware of here are that the Raspberry Pi GPIO integration has now been removed from this release after it was deprecated three months ago now. There are community integrations that have been available for quite some time, so make sure to resolve that before updating. And also MQTT see some changes this month too. Now don't worry, this is just being marked as deprecated in this release and won't be enforced until the 2022.9 update, so three months away yet. But if you have manually configured MQTT entries in your configuration, then you may need to change them over to the new format. And there is an example provided in the release notes for what you need to do. Again, this isn't going to break anything today, but something you may need to look into over the coming weeks if you use MQTT. And that's it for this release, a short and sweet one today with some more incremental updates, but still a nice little improvement and quality of life updates in this version. If you have any questions or queries over this update, make sure to drop them down in the comments and I'll do my best to take a look and help out where I can. Whilst you're down there, you may as well hit that like button and get subscribed. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.